So this morning we are up and we are heading, we're just leaving our hostel and we are heading into the centre of San Salvador to meet with Edwin who is the manager at EC Tours which is the tour company that we did the free walking tour uh, when we were last here in San Salvador and we're super excited to see, uh, we had such a good time with EC Tours that we're excited to see what we can organize with them over the next couple of weeks to really try and show off the best of El Salvador whilst we're here. So we've just jumped in an Uber and we are heading to a cafe where we're going to meet Edwin, probably about five minutes drive away. Cafe La Cosona. There you go. Always good to start the day with a nice cup of coffee. Another cup of coffee. <laughs> Another cup of coffee. Hola. Tree with lovely lanterns. Hola, buenos días. Okay, so we have come down to La Casona Cafe here in San Salvador to meet Edwin from EC Tours and what a place to come for coffee this apparently won awards last year and if you're looking for a beautiful nice cup of coffee with lovely ambience and decor then this is definitely one place you should check out and don't forget el salvador is famous for coffee and i'm hoping that during our time here at some point we may even go to a coffee plantation Cool is that on the backs of the EC Tours t-shirts they have hashtag don't skip El Salvador and that is something you know we've, we've been we've met so many tourists and they say they're just passing through El Salvador on the way to Guatemala or heading south to Honduras but honestly don't believe what you hear online come to El Salvador and we're going to just have a blast over the next couple of weeks we've got two weeks left here in Central America and we're going to show you the best that El Salvador has to offer. We are in downtown San Salvador and we're super lucky that um, we've hooked up with um, Edwin, the owner of EC Tours, because we're going to hang out with him uh, this week. Okay, so we have a really cool week planned with Edwin and we got, what are we doing this week? Hey Chris, we're gonna have a great adventure this week. <laughs> we will visit volcanoes, archaeological site. We're going to have some good coffee. We're Ooh. going to see lakes. We will enjoy the colonial town. We food. will see food as well. We will have the best gastronomy food of Central America here in El Salvador. There you go, I'm excited. <laughs> we have a crazy week planned up. He has organized us so much to do. It's gonna be a ram jammed, action packed week. We're staying at his place here in San Salvador. Downtown at San Salvador. Downtown San Salvador. And we're only about six blocks from the cathedral. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we're super excited. We've just headed out. We're gonna go and try and find some food. Apparently there's a local market nearby and we'll see what we can find. And I'm a bit hungry now. I am, I'm super hungry. So we've just had a walk around um, the local market and what an experience. It's just so different um, from the markets that we get back home. There's a little food area, they were selling lots of different fruits and vegetables and things like that. Um, but we've decided we're gonna head um, into, into the center apparently. Wait for the bus. Apparently the cathedral, the main downtown area, is straight down this road. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a little look down here. The guy 
guy juggling with machetes. Rather than him than me, that's a skill and a half. to try it's called chilaquilas tortilla rellena de queso tortilla rellena de queso so it's like a tortilla with cheese con queso al interior oh so we'll go and give that a try it's looking good we actually now we're back in san salvador we found this restaurant last time we came and it's a really fabulous place to come and eat with the budget travelers you can get a proper meal, a proper balanced diet, although I haven't this time. I've got uh, chips with sauce and cheese and stuff on it, but you can get vegetable dishes with rice and various other bits and pieces. Um, Chris has gone for chicken and um, some rice and some guacamole, but we just fancy a bit of stodgy food, um, and this is the most economical way of doing it. You get a drink as well, and it basically works out about five dollars each. Six dollars ninety for both. What? Six dollars ninety for two meals and two drinks. So how amazing is that? We're really chuffed because this is such an economical way as a budget traveller. tortilla and it's some like some kind of batter but it's got like a tomato-y tasty sauce it's like a really savory um sauce on it it's really nice it's flavorsome and then what you got on your chips these are these are called crazy chips it's the thing they do here they call it locker and basically they just chuck everything on it so i asked for chips and before I had a chance to say anything else, they added the crazy, which is like a mayonnaise, a tomato sauce, and then grated cheese. I'm a bit of a cheese fiend, so it works for me. So we just had a lovely lunch at Sam Sills that you can see behind us, which is literally just off the area by the main cathedral. And a beautiful lunch, reasonable price, and a nice local food at a local price. And they even sell nice cakes. Cake. Cake. We didn't have any cake, but they got nice cakes. This time. It's a beautiful day today. Exactly. Beautiful. It is indeed a beautiful day, and we have woken up in the city of San Salvador after a beautiful night's sleep at Edwin's house. Yeah. Thank you very much, Edwin. Thank you. <laughs> and this morning, we are super excited because we are off to... Dario Digital Cranio. There you go. And that is an online uh, digital news channel. And we're going to have an interview with them about a UK's couple's experience here in El Salvador. We yeah. haven't seen the article, but yeah. yeah, apparently we were we were indeed in the in the local newspaper, which is always lovely. Yeah, that was really super lovely. We've been absolutely blown away by the amount of um, lovely attention we've received from all the people of El Salvador. We've had so much positive feedback to our videos, and we have had so many lovely, generous offers of um, taking us out for pupusas or taking us to the beach. We have. Uh, yeah. We have been blown away. And we won't by have time lovely. to take you all up on those beautiful offers yeah. um, but, but Edwin yeah. is doing his very best to he show is. us everything <laughs> the best of El Salvador um, so that we can promote your beautiful country and share all Absolutely. the beautiful things 
Okay, so we've arrived and we are just trying to find the entrance, which apparently is just above this restaurant here. So we think it's up there somewhere, but Marianne's just texting him to see um, exactly where they are. We're always early. Always English early. people are always early. So that was a wonderful interview there that we just had with uh, Eduardo and uh, we're trying to spread the positive love for El Salvador because we're having such a cool time here. And now let the venture adventure begin because we're going to find a volcano. So we're just driving up to uh, the San Salvador volcano and we have just got a pit stop and it's absolutely beautiful. We are overlooking the Lake Ilopango. It's beautiful up here. This is one of the best views that we've had overlooking the city. That's Chinchontepec in the distance, just behind Lake Ilopango. Just beautiful. As you look over the skyline of San Salvador, you realize that there aren't that many tall buildings. And that's because after the mass explosion of Lake Ilopango all those many years ago, there was actually up to 10 meters of ash deep, which obviously means when you're structurally building um, in high rises, it just wouldn't be able to take that kind of weight. And because there are still active volcanoes, um, and earthquakes, they don't tend to build their buildings very tall. In fact, we um, were told that there was a 5.8 volcano, um, there was a 5.8 um, earthquake two nights ago, but we actually slept through it. So we've driven up a short while longer and we are right, well, nearly at the top. I think there's a bit of a walk to the crater, but the view just gets better and better and better. And amazingly, the sun is still shining. As we've got higher and higher and higher, you can actually see pine trees behind me i would never have expected to find pine trees in el salvador the altitude and the freshness of the air this is just a beautiful place to come okay so we've arrived at the national park it is the park national el boquiron boquiron yeah. el boquiron Okay, so this park is located at the top of the volcano here, looking over San Salvador, and we are gonna go and look at, there's a little museum that tells you a bit about the area, and we're gonna go and have a look at the actual volcano crater. How exciting. So this volcano that we're on now is located only 20 minutes drive from downtown San Salvador, and you can get here a number of different ways. There's a public bus, you can come by taxi or you can come as part of a tour. The volcano last erupted in the year 1917. Uh, the name's name of the volcano is Quetzaltepec, right? So this is like the name in Nahua that we used to call it. So the park here is open 365 days a year and ent entrance to the park for locals is just one dollar and for tourists is two dollars and parking at the park costs just one dollar. So we've left the um, little museum and we are now doing a short hike up to go and have a look at the crater. 
The walk itself, allow probably 45 minutes, is a nice, nice walk to enjoy the park. And uh, it's just so lush. I can't believe how green it is. When we were in San Salvador um, six weeks ago, everything was a little bit drier, but the rainy season is coming and you can tell because everything is just so green. So this park is famous for hummingbirds. So keep your eyes open. You might spot some hummingbirds. I could spot a little feeding station on the tree behind me. The pathways are so easy to navigate. They're very clear, they've been swept. There's nice handrails in some of the trickier parts and it's basically steps. There's also signposts for toilets and uh, little signposts to say which direction you should be walking. So it's very easy to navigate and just follow the way. Alfredo Espino is a famous author and poet from San Salvador. And this beautiful, beautiful mural behind us has been created and dedicated to his life. So we're actually standing on the rim of the El Bocaron uh, volcano crater. It stands at 1,893 meters. Wow! But inside El Bocaron, there is El Bocaronocito, which is the baby one. And you can see it down below behind me. And this crater is actually 558 meters deep. Wowzers! And the little baby one below me is 37 meters deep. So at the time that this volcano erupted in 1917, there were actually lots of people living on, around the, on, on and around the volcano, growing coffee and life was all good until it erupted. So when it erupted, luckily the lava actually flowed away from the city Large parts of San Salvador were destroyed from the earthquake that was generated from this eruption. What's really fascinating is from this angle you can actually see that you are standing on a platform which is on one side of this mahoosive crater that just goes on for miles. It is so history states that this volcano erupts every 100 years, almost to the, to the day. However, it's been 102 years, so it's due to erupt at any time now. Well, hopefully not today, because we're a bit close. We've actually just spotted a mummy vulture feeding a baby up in the tree behind us. So we've just finished our walk and we're back down at the bottom and we're gonna go for some pupusas because that is the national dish here in El Salvador and everybody always eats pupusas. So we've come down to this wonderful little restaurant with beautiful views down from the volcano here. And we've ordered some lunch. And yes, we have ordered the national dish of papusas again, but this time we've ordered something a little bit different. Marianne's ordered... Cheese, spinach and garlic. There you go, who would have thought? And I've ordered beans, cheese, but I've added in some spicy jalapenos. Sometimes things are lost in translation. <laughs> I thought I explained uh, garlic, but I actually said pumpkin. So uh, thank you, Edwin. He's gone to change it to garlic. My Spanish is really not that good. <laughs> and what I love about this restaurant is they've actually used, the trees here are actually the main supports of the restaurant. They just grow straight on up through the roof of the restaurant, through the floor. 
And being on the edge of the volcano, another thing's for sure, you're guaranteed, there's a number of restaurants you can see behind me with beautiful views. And you can feel the air actually up on the volcano is so much cooler than being down in the center of the city. So if you want to escape the heat for an afternoon, it's another good place to come. On the way down the volcano, we stopped at Linda Vista, which is a restaurant with amazing views. But even more important, I found Beethoven the dog. You're huge. This absolutely stunning property restaurant is owned by an El Salvadorian person and they have created an absolutely beautiful, high-end, classy place that is perfect for any event. It's absolutely beautiful with this magnificent 180 degree panoramic view of beautiful El Salvador. It's absolutely stunning. You can see the coastline in the distance, you can see the mountains, you can see Lake Ilopango. It's just absolutely beautiful. I am running out of adjectives to describe this amazing country, but this is a place to come. Our channel is primarily based around budget travel um, and you would think this would be completely out of our price range but we've just checked the menu and main courses are about 10 to 20 dollars so this would some but this would definitely be somewhere that we could come for a treat um, it's beautiful and I think if you're gonna splurge at night. Wow. yeah as like Chris is saying at night can you imagine the views with all the lights and there's lots of lights around the trees as well so it would all be lit up and there's waterfalls and cascading little fountains with lights in them it would be glorious to come back here and um, we're so privileged to get the opportunity to come and visit some of these places and see all the best that is El Salvador And we love holly, uh, holly bird, hollybury. <laughs> we love hummingbirds, also known as colibri in Spanish. So Katy's down there. Katy, what are you doing down there? Katy, Katy, <laughs> what are you doing down there? <laughs> and is one thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven meters ninety-three cut. And it stands at 100, no. 1,000, 893. And it stands at 1,893 meters. <laughs> There's a police escort coming just past us and we believe it is the new president of El Salvador. Yeah. 